The Burton and King article includes the participant section on page 154, or page 5 of the PDF. Authors don't always directly tell us the population of interest, so we often need to make an educated guess given what we learned about the purpose of the research. We already have the information about the focus in the worksheet. It's taken from the article on this slide. It doesn't say anything really specific about who they're interested in learning about, so we would assume that their population of interest was people in general. Noting the population helps us think about a few things. One is whether the sample represents the population. In other words, do we think the results will generalize to all members of that population? Thinking about the population and sample this way can also help us design studies that represent the population we're interested in. The idea of the recruiting and sampling section of the worksheet is to think about how the researchers got people to participate in the study. In other words, how they collected their sample, and what that means for the type of sampling method they used. APA style usually makes finding information about participant recruiting fairly easy because it's typically included in the participants section, and we know where that's included in the sequence of sections. It's also usually labeled with participants. When you're working with electronic files, you might be able to use the find function to search for the word participants and get to it pretty quickly. That can also help when the journal uses a different style for headings because we frequently use the word participants in describing the sample. In Burton and King, the information is on page 154, or on page 5 of the PDF file. When we find the section that should include the information about how they recruited participants, we need to skim to find the specific details. Remember, the idea is that we're trying to figure out how they got people to participate. The authors don't always use phrases exactly like that, but we can usually get the idea. In this case, we get the idea from the phrase about participation in an introductory psychology course. That tells us they contacted participants by making students in that class aware of the study and offering credit for participation. That information, combined with what we already decided about the population, allows us to determine the sampling method. First, we can ask, did this approach allow everyone in the population, in this case all people, to be included? In this case, you're probably saying a pretty strong no, which is accurate and makes it a non-probability sample. Then we can look at the methods in that category to determine the specific method. Since there isn't any indication they were being purposive or that they had students ask other students to participate, we would say this is a convenience sample. As with the population section of the worksheet, our notes about recruiting and sampling can help us think about how the results can be applied and also give us an idea for designing studies. We can usually find the information about the sample characteristics in the same section where we found the recruitment information. You might have instinctively moved ahead to adding that information in the worksheet. The information about how many participants there were, how many of each gender, age, and ethnic representation is identified pretty clearly you want to add that information to the related sections of the worksheet if you haven't already. The idea behind the other relevant characteristics is that authors usually tell us something about the sample, other than gender, age, and ethnicity, that seems like it could have influenced the findings. In this case, that also might be relatively straightforward. The note about using the health center as the primary source of health care. They needed that because of the way they operationalized one of our variables. The notes about the sample characteristics also contribute to our understanding of the results. This section of the worksheet doesn't add to our understanding of the Hearst article, though, since it was a content analysis. Now, pause the recording to look at O'Hare and Share. Complete the population, recruiting, sampling, and sample sections of the worksheet before moving on. This one's more specific, but still a little tricky. The first hypothesis refers to young people who were caught breaking university drinking rules, but we might remember that the abstract just refers to young people. Given that, we might make a note that they were definitely interested in young people or college students who were caught drinking, breaking university drinking rules. Hopefully you found it was fairly easy to find the section with this information. I actually had to look up what adjudication processes meant. It looks like it could mean a few things. 
I think in this context, they're referring to the process students have to go through if they were cited and want to continue as a student or don't want to have something on their record that would keep them from being able to continue later. And that said, it looks like they contact participants by including the study as part of the process required for students who were cited for a rule violation. Although there are some questions about the population of interest, it did appear to be larger than students at a single university. Given that, this would be a non-probability sample. The fact that they only included students who had been cited for a ruled violation could be considered purposeless sampling because it appears to have been an intentional way to only include a certain group of people, but it would also be accurate to simply refer to it as convenience. From there, we can go on to add notes about the sample characteristics. This is an example of an article where the initial sample size is larger than the sample used for analysis. They explain why in the first paragraph of the sample and procedure section. Was there anything that stood out for you in the other relevant characteristics section? There might have been a few things. They were all from one school, they were mostly freshmen, most of them lived on campus, and the largest portion was middle class. Here's the model for the worksheet. To wrap this up, we might note three things. Finding the focus helps us identifying the population, and APA style helps finding the information about recruitment, sampling, and the characteristics of the sample. When we're looking at the characteristics of the sample, some information should be relatively standard, but thinking about the focus can help us think about other characteristics that might influence the results.